So at first we thought that we could expose a little bit of my research project on Leishmania, but I understand it's a bit boring. And uh, we decided to bring you some subject that could be useful for the people that work in small animal practice, internists and intensivists. So we thought about something that we see every day, which is emergencies. And uh, of course, if, if we think about emergencies in DERM, we think about um, adverse reactions, cutaneous adverse drug reactions. And this is what I'm going to focus today. So what is an adverse drug reaction? Um, it's an, an, an intended effect of a drug, either therapeutic or drug of abuse or interaction of drugs. Um, the drugs can be uh, used topically, orally, injectable. Um, it can happen after one administration or several administrations or even after years of treatment with the same drug. It is more likely as more drugs you give to a patient and it's increasing its frequency because of course we see more and more patients, we use more and more drugs more often and unfortunately or fortunately we tend to, to do more and more drug associations in a given patient in a given moment. The true prevalence and incidence is unknown, even in human medicine it's very hard to find good uh, prevalence, uh, um, good uh, epidemiologic studies. Um, but still, the, the, the relative risk for a cutaneous adverse drug reaction is low. Um, in human patients, it's estimated that more or less 10 to 20 percent of the hospitalized patients may suffer a cutaneous adverse drug reaction. Um, and that represents overall more or less 7 percent of the, of the pop general population. In veterinary medicine, we don't have many studies. We have uh, two studies made in, uh, in Cornell in the 90s, and they saw um, 101 cases of cutaneous of adverse drug reaction in a six-year period in dogs and 14 in cats in the same period, which represents, again, um, just 1 to 2 percent of the population population that came to the hospital, not the population of Cornell. And why is that? Why, why is it so hard to, to have good uh, uh, epidemiology in, in adverse drug reactions? One, because in, in the, the cutaneous adverse drug reactions, the signs may mimic, may mimic other dermatopathies. So it's very easy to misdiagnose. It's very easy to miss the diagnosis. Um, because it's challenging and because there are not good uh, objective tests like uh, other clinical tests you can do to, to um, um, diagnose other pathologies. This doesn't happen with cutaneous adverse reactions. Um, and, and, and also because there's a lack of reporting because every day we see adverse drug reactions. Every day we see uh, uh, dogs with uh, glucocorticoids that have thin skin, scaling, um, bad hair coat, and we don't report it. So that's another theme. Okay, so based on the pathologic mechanisms, we can classify the adverse drug reactions in either immunologic or non immunologic. Um, the non immunologic are those that are related, uh, you have two, the, the ones that are not related with the patient, which are related with the drug itself, with its um, pharmacologic activity. It's uh, very predictable, uh, it can potentially happen to any patient. Um, it's related many times with the dose, it's dose dependent, and other times with drugs uh, uh, interactions. We have the example of uh, Dr. Rubicin, a very um, a recent paper that reports uh, Dr. Rubicin associated alopecia in 28 dogs. It's not that these 28 dogs are mar more prone to react to Dr. Rubicin, it's uh, an adverse effect of the drug. Um, we can also see with um, tocitanib, which is um, uh, 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 um, uh, tyrosine kin kinase inhibitor, and we know that these ones alter the melanogenesis, so we expect to see um, the pigmentation. Then we have the idiosyncratic or unpredictable. These are the reactions that are related with the characteristics of the patient. They are not as uh, um, uh, predictable because it's not related with the drug, but with the patient. Um, 
there, there are individuals that may have uh, um, uh, this kind of, of uh, reactions by a known immunologic way because they miss an enzyme or they have uh, a deficiency in the metabolic pathway. The typical example is colis that have the mutation on MDR1 gene that codifies to a glycoprotein and makes them uh, intolerant to ivermectin. But the most common idiosyncratic um, uh, reactions are immunologic. Um, and this will be the focus of the presentation today. How, uh, how these hypersensitivity reactions occur and how do they present to us uh, in the clinic? So the question is, how can drugs trigger an immune response? Basically, they, they act like allergens. There are lots of theories, lots a few theories that explain how drugs can trigger the immune system. Of course, when we have many theories, we re don't really know what's going on. So there are two that I find m more often uh, on the literature. The pro hypothesis that says that drugs are just too little to, to be immunologic active, and so they link to, pr to proteins and they make a complex drug uh, protein and this complex is uh, um, immunologic active. There's another theory, the pharma pharmacological interaction or P concept, that defends that the drug itself can interact directly with the major histocompatibility complex or T cell receptors of the cell. There are other theories. Either way, um, uh, they, they, they trigger the immune system to uh, make an hypersensitivity reaction, one of the four known classic uh, forms. So let's start with the, the type 1. As you know, it's, uh, um, the type 1 is EGE-mediated, is an immediate reaction. Uh, it occurs immediately after exposure to the antigen. Um, in, with adverse uh, drug reactions uh, in, uh, manifesting them, themselves in the skin, we usually see erythema, pruritus, scaling. It may just stay here and just we see just this, or sometimes it can progress to more serious conditions. Uh, pruritus can occur, can be very intense, and the typical example is cats with metimazole that have really, really pruritic uh, facial um, uh, facial pruritus, and so they scratch themselves and have and have uh, uh, heavy scoriations. There are other drugs, uh, carboplatin, inactive ingredients of a thyroid hormone supplement was also described. There's a recent um, case report with imepitwin. It's a little bit. Um, Actually, the, the, the clinical signs are erythema, pruritus, and scaling, but then the, the, the pathomechanism behind, maybe it's a, a type 3, it's more like a lupoid reaction, but it, it clinically we see like erythema, pruritus, and scaling. There's a very uh, good paper uh, from the German um, team uh, and recent that they saw that, and I think we also have this feeling, that uh, um, patients under antipyletic drugs have more uh, cutaneous manifesta manifestations. So they studied 137 dogs that have uh, cutaneous uh, lesions under antibiotic drugs. They found out that 15 of them had lesions after the drug was uh, beginning, um, and three were just erythema, pruritus, and scaling. In scaling eight, developed more moderate signs, but papules, pustules, erythema, and four had really severe uh, uh, conditions. The, the, the dogs in this study that could withdraw the drugs, because many of them cannot convulsionate, so uh, cannot have seizures, so they keep on the drug, but the ones that you can withdraw, they have complete remission after withdrawal. Another one, angioedema and urticaria, this one is very easy to recognize. I would say it's a very, the diagnosis is pretty straightforward. It usually uh, happens after minutes, uh, uh, after the intake or administration of the drug. We see it very often with vaccines. Um, it's rare in cats, we usually see it in dogs. It may, be, uh, it may have uh, pruritus with variable intensity. 
the the thing I I want to point out is the difference between angioedema and urticaria. Angioedema, uh, it's edema that spreads into the subcutaneous um, tissue, so the lesions no, are not so distinct, and urticaria are small circun circumscribed areas of cutaneous edema called hives or wheels in Spanish abones. Um, Common drugs, penicillins, ampicillin, tetracycline, vitamin K, um, radio contrast aid, uh, agents I've never seen, but I know it's described. Sometimes some, some shampoos. I found this, uh, this paper that I, I think it's interesting because this, this is a case report of a Dalmatian that was um, uh, under anesthesia. Um, and, uh, and the pictures, it's very well, it's a good example of how fast this kind of reaction may happen. And he reacted to met, uh, metatomidin, the pictures are really good. So the second type, um, the, the type 2 hypersensitivity, the typical uh, clinical um, entity, it's the pemphigus like reaction, it happens in individuals that are prone to develop self-antibodies, these individuals. And how drugs function here, how, how it happens. The drug is seen like, for, for these patients that already have autoantibodies, the drug is seen like an autoantigen. They see the drug or its metabolites as desmoglein, so they attack. Um, and desmoglein is a protein that, uh, that um, uh, is on the desmosomes there are, that are the links between keratinocytes. So when they are attacked, the connection between keratinocytes is lost and you have the clinical signs uh, like pustules, papules, crust, erythema, depending on which time and in, in the timeline you see the patient, you may see the initial lesion, uh, pustules, papules, or you may get it a little bit um, later and you just see uh, alopecia and scaling or crusting. Uh, common drugs, sulfamides, again, sulfamides, it's, uh, it's almost present in everyone, in, in every uh, cutaneous adverse drug reaction. Other antibiotics like cephalexin, amoxicillin, these are all um, uh, reported with case reports. Um, there's a, a case report of polymyxin B, that's a, 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 an active ingredient of uh, eardrops, and topically it, it's reported a more serious case of, of pemphigus vulgaris. There are several brand marks of spotons to flea control and uh, external parasite control um, that trigger or induce pemphigus. The difference between drug-induced and drug-triggered is very commonly applied to pemphigus because when it's drug-induced, you withdraw the, the, the drug and the, the symptoms go away. When it's drug-triggered, is because the drug triggered the immune system the immune system started all the reaction of attacking the desmoglein, then you withdraw the drug, but the, the, the mechanism is already there and the, the, the condition goes on. We have another entity, sweet syndrome. It's, a ver it's, it's more intense, it's an intense neutrophilic dermatitis. Uh, we see it clinically as pustules, crusts, um, very often uh, patients are um, systemically ill, they have pyrexia, uh, they have immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, leukocytosis, they have pain, they may develop vasculitis. Uh, of course, the, the, um, the diagnosis, like in pemphigus, is uh, with uh, histopathology. The common drugs associated are uh, mostly ions, so carpofren and furocoxib are reported in, in more than one case. Then we have the type 4 um, uh, reactions. Um, they are the type 4, as you know, is, it's, uh, it implies immune complex uh, deposition, depending on where the immune complex are uh, deposit. If it's systemically or just in one organ, you have uh, a depending uh, intensity of the disease. Uh, in the skin, lesions also vary depending on how damaged is the, the vessel. The first one I'm going to talk about is cutaneous vasculitis. Um, 
so if we think what is vasculitis, we have the vessel, we have the immune complex there, it's in the wall. The first sign of inflammation is an enhanced um, permeability. So you have um, a fluid that comes out of the vessel, it, it gives you edema. So you start by, see, by seeing swelling, subcutaneous edema, usually in plaques because it's where uh, underneath is where the, the vessel is uh, damaged. Then the, the, the red blood cells come out and of course you have hemorrhagic plates. Consequently, of course, the, you have no uh, blood supply and the skin will die. So you will have a central ulcer, necrosis, a central ulcer with the, the in a, uh, like a crater um, way. When, when it happens in areas of poor collateral circulation, such as foot pads or pina, um, you, have, you can have uh, severe damage, like in this guy over here. It's from here, from the wab. It's, it's symmetrical, it's the same dog, the, both ears. Uh, it's not very symmetrical, but it's bilateral. Um, and this, this kind of presentations you see um, more often with, uh, with vaccine, one month after vaccine, or with uh, trimetropine sulfa. Common drugs, again, sulfamides. Um, it can happen with cephalexin, metronidazole, meloxicum, or more uh, uh, a few months uh, after, typically, typically one month after the vaccine, most often with rabies <coughs> vaccine. It can happen with itraconazole. It is dose dependent. There are studies that, that show us that it's more likely to happen if you use 10 mg per kg, and it's much more safer to use 5 mg per kg of itraconazole. It's reported in cats with fembendazole and with cimetidine and with other drugs. So how do you know when you see, um, when you see, how is it? Whoa. Oh, it's here, but it's not. This was supposed to show you the first pictures. How do you know when you see the, f the first two pictures if this is just an allergic dog? Um, so if you have just erythema or if it is um, a hemorrhage underneath the skin. You can use a test that is called uh, dioscopy, which consists of, it's a very simple thing. You, you press a, a, a glass slide and if the blood Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. It's like Star Wars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you press the slide, uh, here you, you don't press it, you have the slide, but you are not doing pressure, and here you are. You see that it comes from red to white. This means that the blood is within the is into in the blood vessel. So you press the slide, you collapse the the blood vessel and you don't see er erythema anymore. So the upper uh, uh, pictures are uh, erythema, it's blood inside the vessel. And if you have vasculitis and the red blood cells come out of the, the vessel to the interstitial space, you press the slide and it, it keeps its uh, red. Uh, so it doesn't turn white. Okay, the um, fourth type, um, we have um, basically two important entities, erythema multiforme and 10, um, toxic epidermal necrosis. Erythema multiforme is a name that comes from human medicine because um, uh, it, the, the, the clinical aspect is very, almost I would say, patognomonic. There are lesions uh, with target uh, shape, but this doesn't happen in our patients, okay? So um, in, in our patients, we, we, don't, we base our diagnosis more on histopath than in the clinical signs. The clin in, in, in dogs, because in cats it's very unusual, in dogs, what do we see? We, do, we, we can see the mild form, just erythema like this pug, or we can see, and this is the more typical um, scene, erythematous macules or papules, slightly elevated, sometimes with the, in the borders indurated, uh, and clear and centrally, it's or either cyanotic or, um, or normal or hemorrhagic. 
and they make koalas and form annular serpiginous patterns. Uh, and, and this picture uh, uh, here is the typical, the typical um, clinical um, uh, feature of erythema multiforme. Uh, usually, it happens most uh, in 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 a, in a study. It, uh, we could see that it happens mostly in axillary and groin. It can uh, uh, affect mucocutaneous junctions, oral cavity, the pinna. If you 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 know that it's not common to see ulcers in the inner face of the pinna, um, with autotitis, of course. Um, and target lesions, really, it's just on 16%. So don't, don't focus just on target lesions because we, d we are not going to find them more often than this. We can also have um, uh, pain, Nikolsky sign. Nikolsky sign was, is when you press the skin and the epidermis moves above the dermis because they are split and the, the epidermis is dying. So you may have Nikolsky. Uh, you, have, you may have edema of distal limbs or pruritus is not that common and depending on how extensive the disease is or is presenting, you may or not have systemic signs like fever, etc. The common drugs again, sulfamides, other uh, antibiotics in cats is described with aurotioglucose and um, antipyletic drugs. Um, Many times it has a mild course and when you withdraw the, the drug, um, it, they will improve in two weeks. The other entity is Steven Johnson syndrome or, uh, and toxic epidermal necrosis. Basically they are the same but with different extents. For many years we thought, we veterinarians and in human medicine, we thought it was the same as erythema multiforme. Now we know that they are different entities, they have different pathomechanisms. One, erythema multiforme happens because there, there's single, single cell death called apoptosis in, in erythema multiforme. And Stephen Johnson in toxic epidemic necrosis, there, it's not a single cell death, it's a, conjunction, a, a group of cells connected that are dying, so it's necrosis. And literally, in this disease, the skin dies. So, um, it's a very, very severe uh, condition. I would say it's the, the one that I would love that you go and remember of it and, and know how to recognize it if it happens uh, with your patients. Um, 80 to 95 percent are triggered by drugs. Um, again, it's it's uh, old, we don't we we know it's a different mechanism from EM, but we don't really know how how it's uh, all the mechanisms. So it's impossible to distinguish um, uh, properly with histo histopathology. So we must rely on the clinic. Um, what happens in acute epidermolysis? What I said, we have detachment of epidermis uh, from the dermis, so you have a positive Nikolsky sign. Stephen Johnson is less than 10% of the body surface, 10 is more than 30%, and then you have a superposition of the two of them between 10 and 30%. It's, it's rare, fortunately, but is, it is life-threatening. We, we must know how to recognize it. Um, and, um, and usually affects uh, oral mucosa and it, it is drug-induced. So we see uh, hemorrhage, we see ulcers, we, see, we don't see very often blisters because blisters are very fragile. They are the primary lesion, but they are fragile. So when you see, you see ulcers usually, and you see a sick dog. He is uh, usually anorectic, lethargic, may have um, pyrexia, has pain, uh, and depending on, on how extensive the, the ulcers are, he, must, he may be um, dehydrated, uh, on sepsis, etc. Um, it's a sudden onset, usually there is a drug history, um, and the mortality rate is high. Even in human medicine, if the patient is uh, on ICU uh, burn unit from day zero, the, the um, uh, 25 to 35 percent of people with 10 die. In, pa in veterinary patients, um, almost all of them die, either with sepsis or due to um, fluid loss. 
common drugs, sofonamides again, levamizole, phenobarbital, there's uh, um, case reports with uh, dips containing anti-flea products. And then we have the m another entity that is not, uh, I cannot put it in the type 1, 2, 3 or 4 hypersensitivity and this is just a model to explain the mechanisms. You cannot always put each one of them in, in each hypersensitive reaction. The moral folliculitis is described in cats in a cat with metimazole here uh, by Jorge Castro and others. And we in in human uh, in human medicine there's a um, a case report of follicular mucinosis uh, uh, related with uh, um, uh, an, an, an implant, uh, um, um, uh, GnRH uh, um, agonist. And I, I'm seeing this because we saw a case here in the WAB with an implant of deslorinin, which is uh, the same uh, um, principle. And, um, and we are describing it. Um, so this is a dog that put it, the implant to chemical castration and uh, he started with pruritus immediately a few days after. He did a second implant six months after and in, uh, in, day, in more or less in a year he came to the clinic with um, erythema, alopecia and his signs. He had, we did biopsy, we found uh, um, um, f uh, f mucinotic folliculitis uh, in, in the histopath, the, the attack to the follicular wall is evident. We see in uh, uh, the CD um, positive cells, uh, T cells attacking the, um, the follicle, so we know it's uh, immune mediated and it, it is lymphocytic. And with Alcyon Blue, we also saw the machine around the follicle and uh, destroy, destroying the follicle wall. After the, the effect of the implants uh, were away, so more or less one year after the last implant, um, the the, meanwhile, we treated the dog with cyclosporine, we obtained total remission, we withdraw cyclosporine, and with no drugs, he had complete remission. Uh, until now, until February 2018, he is uh, uh, asymptomatic. So, take home message. How do we um, diagnose um, cutaneous adverse drug reactions? With history, we must have an history of drug exposure. There are um, a few guidelines that we can follow. Um, the drug must, the, the dog must have been in contact with the drug at least seven days prior because uh, it, he must be sensitized and then he will react unless it is a re-exposure. Um, it, it may happen just recently after the drug has been uh, discontinued. Um, the lesions uh, uh, come uh, rapidly within seven to 14 days. Um, and they go away also rapidly within 7 to 14 days after drug withdrawal. The clinical exam, we already talked. We can have some, um, some biochemical and um, complete blood count uh, um, changes. Is the pathology, I just put a few uh, pattern um, um, diagnosis words that you will see in the histopath report that may be related with drug reactions. You can do the challenge and re-challenge, which means that you, the challenge is the most common test uh, done. Uh, it's cost effective, it's easy to perform, and basically is stop the drug. If you suspect of a cutaneous adverse drug reaction, stop the drug. And um, uh, if you have more than one drug, you, you can do one of two things. You can stop it all and you reintroduce one by one and try to see which one gave the reaction or you, if, if he, the, the patient needs all the drugs and you cannot just withdraw all of them, try to take one by one starting with the most likely drug to provoke a cutaneous adverse drug reaction. 
Rechallenge is the gold standard. So if you take off the drug and the, the patient is good and you put the drug again and the patient is sick, it's the ideal. But of course, it brings many ethical issues. Um, you shouldn't do that if unless it's absolutely necessary for the patient outcome. If the drug is absolutely necessary for the patient to live or to have a long-term survival, Never do if you have anaphylaxis or 10, so if you have a really, really uh, uh, serious adverse drug reaction, don't do this. And if you have to do, do it uh, in, in under hospital surveillance with, um, with uh, an intensivist prepared to, to, to act. And you should start with lower doses and increase the dose uh, uh, gradually. You have the skin tests and in vitro tests. Um, the in vitro tests are used more in, in, in human medicine because you cannot test patients as, uh, as you may uh, expect. Um, they are, I name it, they, they, you, can, you can do several types of tests. Uh, usually in, veterinarian, uh, in veterinary medicine we use it more uh, in universities and for research purposes. You, you should not do this if you are not sure it is a cutaneous adverse drug reaction and usually you do it when you, yeah, when you suspect you have a strong suspicion of the drug. So you, you're not testing all the drugs in the patient, you suspect, you suspect of this drug, you test this drug. Then you can use um, adverse drug reac reaction algorithms uh, Emma has in its website uh, uh, recommendations to, to do it, you can use it, but what you will see more often in the literature is the Naranjo uh, Adverse Drug Reaction Scale. Um, this scale is a, it consists of an algorithm of 10 question, uh, questions that, are, um, that systematically establishes a causal association between the drug and the adverse effect. Um, in the case of, of PUT, the, our drug with uh, follicular mucinosis, um, we obtained a total score of six. And basically, with the, you, you answer all the questions, you have a score, and then if you, you, with, uh, depending on the value, you may have a definite uh, uh, diagnosis of cutaneous drug reaction, or probable, or possible, or doubtful. In our case, we obtained a score of six, a six. Uh, so in our patient, it was a probable okay, um, a cutaneous adverse drug reaction. Treatment, I'm not going to talk much about it, just to know that we should, whenever possible, we should discontinue the drug. Many times, just this is more than enough to stop the, the, the disease from going on. Avoid chemical similar drugs, of course. Um, you must treat symptomatically. There's not much uh, that you can do. Sometimes the immune modulation is controversial. It's used as in many other situations. Um, often you don't obtain a response. There are a few papers that describe <coughs> the use of intravenous immun immunoglobulin to treat these dogs with, uh, with good results also describe pento pentoxifylin and, um, and uh, a spray with glucocorticoid also described. And that's it. Oh, thank you to Affinity.